In the lead up to Wrath of the Lich King, and even the first couple of weeks of Wrath of the Lich King, there's a few professions that are going to be really, really strong, and you can make lots and lots of gold with a mid-tier ore. Now, if you have a look, Mithril Ore has got a very good price across the entire EU and US market, at around two gold, let's say, per ore, also known as about 40 gold a stack. Now, on the particular server I'm playing on, which is Thekel, I've been selling stacks of Mithril Ore for around 47 to 51 gold pretty much all day long. Since I was showing people on stream this exact strategy, it's dropped a little bit, but it's still around 40 to 41 gold a stack. Now, there is loads of ways you can get Mithril Ore, don't get me wrong, but this particular run that I've come up with, I say I've come up with it, but you know what I mean, I've sort of refined the exact route and how I do it, and I'm going to share it with you now. But like you can see, you can sell Mithril all day long. Now, the best place to start is actually at the end, and the reason I say that is because ideally you want to be doing this on a second account, which will be clearer why in a minute. You don't need a second account, but trust me, if you've got a second account so you can at least use your other account to reset, and then when this gets locked out, you can leave it sat between four to five different Mithril spawns. You can continue to keep getting Mithril all the time, even when you're locked out of the instances. So the farm does take place in Moradon, as you can see, and we're doing a bit of a princess run, really, but instead of heading towards the princess, we're actually just changing the route slightly. You absolutely can go into the purple portal instead, whereas we we're actually dropping down and doing what would be a scepter run because you don't actually need the scepter during the pre-patch to open the portal. The portal is always there. We're going in this way because ordinarily when you spawn, there's a mithril deposit straight away or at least one in this room. But you can get four to five mithril every single run. And then if you use your second account to then log out and use the other account to reset, you'll then start this graveyard where, as you can see on the little mini map at the top right, a little red circle, there's even a mithril that spawns here. And then actually, as you head to the instance, you're going to run past three to four different mining spawns outside and another three to four actually inside. So you can easily get one to two mithril veins on the way just to get in, in the instance after a reset. But then you're like, well, what do you do when you're locked out? Well, I sit and I'll show you exactly where I sit in a second. But the reason I just sit outside like this and opt for fast runs by going into sort of the, the portal, the princess portal, whatever you want to call it, is because I don't actually see the point of adding around an extra six minutes of run to get one to two more veins because you'll get those outside. So what you can do, if you go in the purple portal, you're basically going to head to this exact point still. But I get about one, maybe two extra mithril at most. The most I've ever had doing it, going in the purple portal instead of the one that I go in, is two extra veins. But it literally, it's so big. You've got such a big run to get to this point that you're look you are looking at adding five to six minutes absolute minimum. So then it's like nine minutes a run. I much prefer doing my three minute, three to three and a half minute runs, going in the princess portal, get my four veins, get out and then sit outside here on this bridge. I literally just stand on this bridge and wait for my resets to drop out. And as you can see, if you zoom in on the map, you can see three mithrils and there is actually one that don't show. So I can then just alt tab onto my alt on my other account or on my main account, whatever, and carry on questing or dying by the looks of it. And then wait for my lockouts to run out and boom, go back in and do a run. So you're probably thinking, well, what does a run look like? So when you go in, you want to turn around straight away and go through the waterfalls. As you can see, there's one mithril here. It can sometimes be on this pillar or the pillar to the right or the pillar to the left. But bottom line is there's normally at least one in this room. If there's not one in this room, odds are in one of the following rooms, you're going to get two. You should always be aiming for around four veins a run. Now, a little tip like you can see me respecking here is if you've got a retribution off spec, it's worth running through here as rep just for the extra movement speed from your talents. It may only be 15%, but it still helps. So you can literally run past everything on this route without pulling a single mob. Now, if you go into the purple portal, there are some packs that are very difficult to avoid. And this is another reason that I'm not that bothered about going through the purple portal just to get that one or two extra veins because you're going to get four in here on average every run. Plus, you're going to reset quicker. So you're going to get that run back to then be able to potentially get anywhere between four and six on the way back to the instance after you've reset. When you go around this corner, there's going to be a potential of two to three in this room. Ordinarily, you only get one or two, but it depends what you got in the first room when you start. But if we pause here at the top left here on the map, 
map, that's a potential spawn point. As you can see, we've got one around the middle of the room, and then there's another spawn point at the bottom of this room as well. But there's actually around four or five, thinking about it. When I'm looking at this run, there's probably four or five different points where you can get this mithril. But this is now mithril or number two in this run so far. All you're going to do is just jump down here and continue on. Tinkerer Gizlock on the left hand side here is also absolutely worth killing because if you want to get some raw gold as well, it's a, he drops items that are around, I don't know, two, two and a half gold each. And the same goes for Rock Grip. If we jump off the water, which we'll look at in a minute, sorry, if we jump off the edge into the water and we see Rock Grip, you can absolutely kill him just for some raw gold. The bosses die really quick, obviously, and you can sort of net five to six gold just in raw gold killing these two bosses. I didn't kill him here because I'm more bothered about the Mithril, but as you can see on the map, we're going around avoiding all these borers and we've got Mithril or number three. Now, I've got no timer on screen, but if we do a quick switch back, you can see when we started, it was 14.49. We've just got our third Mithril and it's only ticked over the three minute mark and we've only got one more that we really want to get but if we happen to get two more that would be nice we're going to continue round ignoring all the trash don't get any of them now at this point here around where the cursor is down there you can also get an ore but if it spawns there don't jump down and get it yet so even if it was there now i still wouldn't jump down this would be the last place i'd go instead we're going to continue round go across the bridge and see what we've got in there and as you can see we've just crossed the bridge and there's another ore so this is our fourth mithril in this run so far which is probably going to be about all we get because i would say four is about the maximum i i believe i've had five in one run and if you go in the purple portal instead which you're just basically going to use the purple portal to head to this point again i've had six but as i say i'd rather just farm outside once i've got the four in these so that's 20 or so that's 20 lots of mithril that you're going to get 20 veins in around 15 to 18 minutes depending on what class you are how fast you move all that sort of thing without physically killing a single mob. Then all you're going to do is just log out, switch to your other character again, reset, jobs are good em. And now it's this run back that I like, because as I say, normally I would say, I'd say nine times out of 10, you're going to find at least one Mithril on the way back as well. One to two. The most I've had is three. I've found three Mithril on the way in to go in and get in another four. So that's seven Mithril veins in let's say four minutes, four and a half minutes, if you were to include the run from the graveyard as well. It's just an excellent farm. And when you're selling them for like 40 gold a stack, it really does not take long to get that stack. And just for example purposes, as you can see on screen, there is an ore down in the water in this particular run. So that's where you can actually see it. But again, go across the bridge and make sure you check for any other ores first before you jump down there. Unless it is the fourth one. If you've already had three and that one in the water is the fourth, I'd say you're pretty safe to jump down. But as you can see in this particular run, I actually ran all the way around. There was another ore, so I got that one. Now my next place I'm going to go is back to the water, jump down, loot that vein and reset. But that's it. That's a really nice, easy way that any class can make gold as long as you've got mining. As I say, if it's on your alt account, all the better. Even better because now you are you can just do this, get locked out, sit there farming those veins outside and then you know go back on your other account and do whatever you want while you've got I don't know, 30, 40 minute downtime in between being able to do another five runs. I've made hundreds of gold doing this. Well, thousands now, in fact. So definitely get yourself in there and uh, flood your auction house with Mithril. Wait till the price is tank and then probably find something else to do. But if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member. You get access to emotes. Everyone will know you remember when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll see you on the next one.